Okay, we continue in Masechet Shabbat, chapter 22, Mishnah Bet. We start speaking about the uh, uh, concept of uh, cooking in hot water, putting things into hot water. It's, is it called cooking or not? And uh, the interesting uh, thing, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it in, uh, in Orthodox households, in synagogues, that people, when they make tea or coffee or uh, add something to hot water on Shabbat, they do it what's called klisheni, and some klishlishi, second or third vessel. Third, where does it come from? Where does it come from? So the, the Mishnah, the, the Gemara speaks about that. Already the Gemara speaks about that, and it says klisheni lo mevashel, that when you, when you take hot liquid and you pour it into a second it vessel, cools. it cools it down. And I asked, uh, I asked someone this past Shabbat, we were, I saw him doing that, and I said, you think really that the temperature of the, of the water in that second cup is much lower than the first cup? You have to use a thermometer to use it to to take, to check it, and probably if you took my urn uh, is is set on two hundred five two hundred five degrees on Shabbat. So probably after you per- pass it to the next one, maybe two hundred degrees. Still, it is a temperature that could cook. And I think the problem is that people don't. Re- this is one case, interesting case where the, uh, the if, where if you would follow the scientific guidelines, the halacha today should have been stricter than it was in the time of the Gemara. Because in the time of the Talmud, vessels were porous and had very thick uh, walls. The, 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 the vessels were very thick because they didn't have the technology to make thin vessels, so thin utensils. So today you take, for example, a, a, a cup, a glass cup, of today is much thinner even than glasses that were made in the, uh, most glasses that were common in the 1500s. Let alone, if you go back to, the, uh, to that time, they had glass utensils, but they never used them for hot material. They were perfume bottles, and they were extremely, extremely precious. The, uh, they had cups that they would use, which mentioned the Gemara, Zugita uh, Hivarta, white glass, not, not transparent, they called white glass, extremely uh, expensive and also only used for cold liquids. What you use for hot liquids were usually clay or metal or maybe even wood. And when you pour something, and they were not, they were uh, wide, they speak about bowls, not cups. When you pass from uh, in hot water that's, that's on a low flame, covered flame, into that vessel, it does cool significantly. So for them, they said this is, this is something that cools the water down. Um, and I had a, a similar situation of you know, a problem in, uh, in Colombia, one time, the uh, the the shohet asked me to join him to the to the uh, slaughterhouse because his uh, supervisor he worked with someone else who used to supervise the shita. You have to have two people working as a team, even though he's knowledgeable. But that's just a cautionary measure. So that person was not able to make it for a month. I used to go with him, and we I encountered this problem that they had there of uh, immediately after the. Uh, after slaughtering chicken, in order to be able to remove the feathers, the, which is done by a machine, they uh, they dip the uh, the chickens in uh, containers with hot water, and that softens the uh, the feathers, and then the machine could pluck them. The problem is that if the water is boiling, it is called meliga. It's called uh, it's a it's a certain process that Shohan Aruch says we're not allowed to to do because you boil the blood in. In the in the chicken, and then you're not allowed to consume it. So what they would do, they would uh, transfer the water three times to make it klishlishi. But the problem was that even after you did that, even though by halachic definition it was third vessel, but if you put your finger in it, you would you would pull it back immediately. It was too hot. So the Lubavitch there really didn't uh, want to use that, and they would wash it in cold water and then they clean up their own chicken. So here's the, here's the, the, the conflict between the scientific definition or just even what you could measure with your eyes and the halakhi definition. However, this, is, this was not really a problem because all of that cliche ni, cliche shi, second or third utensil, are all cautionary measures, are all fences. Because anything that was cooked, pre-cooked, or prepared from before Shabbat, whatever you do on Shabbat doesn't cook it. And anything that you put in hot water... Uh, it cannot be fully cooked, and cooking is only on the fire immediately. So all these are fences. As I mentioned, the Ashkenazim are extremely cautious with that. They consider anything to be uh, easily cooked, and therefore they will not put it uh, in the first vessel. But 
the halacha is when you make coffee, when you make tea, you could pour water directly on it because both tea leaves and uh, and coffee were roasted previously. Unless you use green tea, um, it's another problem. Anyway, um, green tea is not always not green tea or white tea. Uh, powder is different. Ah, okay. So, so, what, what is the problem with green tea? No, I think some, some of the green tea is not, is not roasted before, but even that is not considered uh, cooking. Yeah. So it's dry, right? Very yeah. Mint leaves you wouldn't cook anywhere. Mint leaves, again, according to the Gemara, they're not kalea bishur. Only if it's kalea bishur, only something that is cooked easily. So, mint leaves you could, you could put and pour water on it if you want. I do tea into the hot water. Yeah. People mostly put. Yeah, it's it's fine. I and I. I was told once by a young man who studied in yeshiva for about five six years already, that he doesn't drink tea on Shabbat because he's not sure what is the right way to make it. This is not what should happen without a chum. What about what about not uh, reheating soup Shabbat morning? Oh, so that brings That's us to okay. that, okay. right? So about reheating food on Shabbat, there uh, it's sort of like an action. Everybody knows that you could heat dry things and not eat things with sauce or with soup. Um, and not only people know that, I know of households where fights broke out over that between the husband and the wife, the parents and the children, the guests and the host because they didn't want to eat it. Now, the, uh, there's an interesting split here between Maimonides and the Yemenites who follow him the Rema, who, who represents the Ashkenazi Halakha, and the Shohan Aruch. The Shohan Aruch seems to say that when you want to put anything back on, on the fire or the plata on Shabbat, it has to be still hot. Shayat Soled the book, meaning that if you put your, your hand into it, you'll recoil, and that you still hold it in your hands, and that you were planning to put it back on the plata. But have in mind that the type of fire that he's speaking about is not our... Plata. It's a, either an open flame or a covered flame. And if you made uh, a, a certain mark that reminds you that it is Shabbat, all these laws are different. It doesn't matter if it's if it's on if you put it on the on the counter or if it's not uh, all hot, etc. The Rema, what the Rema says that as long then that there is a little warmth in that dish, you could put it back on the the fire. So the Rama is more lenient. So much more lenient, but it doesn't make sense. What do you mean a little warmth? It's already cold that it's you feel a little warmth. It's from last night. We are talking Shabbat. Yeah, we're right, talking right. about cold. Yeah, no, we're talking about something that you removed. I know, wait, I didn't get to the cold yet. I'm, I'm going in, in stages. So the Rama says that we're talking about something that you removed. Was it's like Friday night. You took yeah, Friday night, you took, you put it aside, you want to put it back, right. Um, so the Rama says as long as there's a little warmth in it, you could put it back. It doesn't, doesn't make sense. There's what is the logical argument? So then you have to go to, to Maimonides. Maimonides says, "En bishul har bishul." Once something was cooked, it, and he goes with it the full the full distance. Forever. Once it was cooked, that's it. it. Says not only food, even water, even water that has been boiled and then cooled down, it's considered cooked. Which he's right. Even though we think, wait, I cannot make coffee with cold water, right? I need to be hot. But from the point of view uh, let's say from a hygienic point of view, the boiling changed something in the water that now is done. It's now, uh, if, for example, your municipality says you must boil the water before using it, if you boiled it and put it aside in a, in a, in a container, you could use it, you don't have to reboil it. So Rambam says, en bishul har bishul. They can never recook, meaning that even if it's completely cold, you could put it back on the plateau on Shabbat. And this is something that the Yemenite community used to follow at least until the 60s. I don't know if they still do it today because they were all re-indoctrinated, you know, with the Litvak mentality. Uh, so they used to, to heat a big pot of water before Shabbat and put it aside. And on Shabbat, refill small kettles and put it on the plata. And in the 60s, one, one rabbi, one Yemenite rabbi, wrote to the... Uh, to the head of the Yemenite community, to the one of the leading rabbis, I think it was Mari Saleh, um, or Mari Khsar. I, I, I'm looking for the teshuva, I couldn't find it. But I know, I, I remember what he told him. He said, we should tell our Yemenite uh, brethren to stop doing it because it doesn't look good. Because the Ashkenazim and the Sephardim don't do that. 
And he answered, he says, Hanachlaim, let them be, because you think that they're lenient regarding the halachot on Shabbat, of Shabbat, but they are very, as a matter of fact, they are very strict in the halacha of enjoying Shabbat. You want to have hot tea, you enjoy it only when it's, it's really hot, and since the halacha allows it, it's okay. So now, we go back to the Ramah. The, the Ramah, who's the Ashkenazi Prosek, who says that you could put something back on the plata as long as there's a little warmth, must hold like Maimonides. He really holds like Maimonides, that even if it's completely cold, you could put it back. And the reason he said there's a little warmth, that should be a little warmth, is offense. He wanted to make a distinction. Now, fast forward to, to today. Um, there are many different opinions. I uh, would recommend to look at the book called Menuhat Ava by Rabbi Moshe Levi, who was a Talmud of Rabbi Meir Mazuz in Kisera Hamim in Israel. Uh, yeah. Tremendous Talmud Hacham in Bnei Brak. Uh, his book is very, very organized, and he's not a lenient person. He is the study right. Rabbi Meir Mazuz is the son of Ishmaslia. And Rabbi Moshe Levi, his book is very well organized, very meticulous, and very clear in all its presentation. And when he speaks about Bishul Har Bishul, he says that uh, putting back, reheating something only applies to an open flame. That is where you have a problem. But when you have a plata, electric, electric plata, or what people call blech, which I don't like the word because it sounds like someone is, you know, whatever. Uh, Blech, plata, warmer, whatever it is, or, or, or in an oven with a timer and no light that you could open and close on Shabbat, you could read even soup. And everything that was pre-cooked before Shabbat. Hacham Abadei Yosef rules the same way, but he has different fences. He says that if you want to reheat soup on Shabbat, do one of two things. Either ask a Naju to put it there for you, or you put it there, and you remove it before it starts bubbling, before it starts boiling. Mm-hmm. So, and that obviously is, a, is just a, 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 a way to remember that it's Shabbat. Meaning, even if you left it there, it would not be, no, not, not be a problem. But it says, remove it beforehand. <laughs> By the same token, there's also when Hadavah says, everything that is edible, as is, because it went a certain process of preparation, and, uh, and you want to prepare it on Shabbat, you could do you could do it. So, for example, the one one example that I think is is really on the uh, on the border is uh, ramen soup. You know the the the, the ramen soup uh, or in, for the kosher it's tradition soup, right? It's not recommended because it's yeah. it's full of MSG and it's not uh, doesn't sit well. But sometimes people travel. You're stuck in a hotel somewhere, you have nothing to eat, you have this cup, or you have hot cereals that you can't eat, and you want... So most of these things are processed. You could put water on it. I mean, you could eat this, this, this soup. If you have an emergency, you could eat as it is, because it's fully cooked. Um, and uh, you could add water to it from, uh, from directly from the urn, if you want to be careful, or make a... I mean, couscous. Like couscous is the same thing. The couscous is edible. It's not the couscous of our right. avoten of imoten. No, you like, can buy the couscous that you can yeah. just pour, pour hot water. Right. Yeah. Which, which for our, my, my wife's grandmother would not be... Don't eat. Right, exactly. It would not... <laughs> it would not please, right. <laughs> right. It would not be kosher couscous because you have to, yeah. you have to roll it by hand and you have to then yeah. uh, right. steam it over the soup and it takes like hours until the real soup. And it's... Also different. Yeah, There's no yeah, comparison. It's just a quick question. Yeah. Now, the Boskim who allowed the thing like from the plata, yeah. they all seem to say you have to take it out of the plata and do it. Why not do it from the plata itself? Oh, no, you could. You, you could. could you could. You could. Because there's no magis. You don't need to actually take it out. Right. Because they say, you know, the process, you take it out, you keep your hand because you... Yes, you yes. Do. No, you can Why take it just, out. You can put it on the counter. The reason that, that in the halakha, and the Gemara has mentioned... Not to, not to serve from a pot that stands directly on the fire is because of something called megis. Megis is stirring the pot okay. to make it cook better. Right. Uh, and okay, so that is also something that with the most dishes that we have today and the pots that we have today is not applicable. The way the, the heat distribution in, the, in our pots is, are, are very, is very good. And you usually don't stir the pot while it's on the, on the <coughs> plata to make it cook faster. And even if right. you did... It's now, but to tell you that everybody is lenient on that, and not true. Hacham Odechalia was very strict regarding plata, and he says you have to cover the plata with aluminum foil. 
And he says, but why is that? It's not cooking. It's something called mehzeki mevashel. It looks as if you're cooking. So here it's more, when, when you say it looks as if you're cooking, it's not marit ayin. There's a concept of marit ayin, which is, what will other people think of you? That's a different issue. Mehze is... How is, it makes you feel. Exactly. How you perceive it. And he says, if you perceive that as cooking, you might end up cooking on Shabbat, so it's better not to do that. So the truth is that most people don't cook on a plata, but some people do. My mother, for example, Allah Shalom, used to make... Uh, the, it's a, uh, one of the favorite Iraqi dishes called mehshi, which is stuffed peppers or, or vegetables with rice and meat. And the way to do it, she would give it a quick uh, boiling on the stove. And then, even during the week, because she had to go to work, she would put it on the plata and come back, you know, after five, six hours, and it was ready. So there were cases where people cook on it, but it's, it's done in a special way, so one uh, should not be so concerned about it on Shabbat. But like I said, people are so uh, uh, afraid of transgressing, I and mean, I'm sure you with the, with the catering business, no, you run into... Forget about it. Uh, okay. Yeah, we have to use uh, tea essence, because they're right. afraid that if they... Not the ripping, but the, the tea bags, they won't do a kli shishi. Right. Tishini, tishishi, so that we have to put tea essence on Shabbat. Tea That's essence. But what, what about tea essence being boiled by pouring hot water on it? No, yeah. tea essence would be left like... It's a con- just concentrated tea in a, in a pitcher. And it will left hot? That to, no, not hot. Cold. Okay. And then you add that to the, uh, okay. the uh, hot water. Yeah, no. I know Instead we do. Dipping, uh, the Iraqis, the, all the Iraqis do tea essence, and they call it, they call it uh, actually senes. Because they got, they got it from English, essence. Uh, so the Arabs says, no, man, asita senes le Shabbat, right? You have to make, and because the Arabs drink a lot of tea and, and, and dark tea, so you have to have that. But the majority opinion is of what, what, that, right? The is very simple. You could, you could pour it directly on a tea bag, there's no problem. I'll add one more thing. Uh, some people argue that uh, with tea, there's a problem of coloring. The, and for, even though the halakha is ento ve'abokhlin, coloring or dyeing mm. doesn't apply to food, mm. some people said that you have to be careful with that. Right. And therefore, that with, the, with the sense, with the essence, right, they would say, uh, first, and then make it complicated. First, pour the water from the first vessel into a second vessel. Then in, a, in, a, in another cup, put the, the essence and then pour water on it. So it's complicated. So uh, he speaks about that and he says... For, for those who question the idea of, you know, coloring and all that, uh, or cooking, just do a simple experiment. Take a tea bag and put it in cold water. And you see that it still colors the water. So it's not about, it doesn't really cook. It's just the, 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 that water that colors that comes out of the, of the tea bag. So, I'm sorry, man, I cannot help with the, you know, the supervision of the pot, no. of the catering. That's, oh, that's I'm at the least of the problems. But with pots, I'm sure there are other things that you have to, to watch. But in your private kitchen at home, according to Halakha, anything that was pre-cooked from before Shabbat can be reheated on the plot with no problem.